here once again from shortmeetina.com with my daily recap. Happy Monday. I hope you're having an enjoyable Monday so far. We just got off the weekend. Again, equally, I hope you had a great weekend and we are back at it today. So before we get into a recap of the overall markets, let me welcome you. If this is your very first time tuning into a Short Me Tina video, I like to say Welcome. If you are a returning listener, welcome back. Do us a solid. Drop us a comment in the comment section. Say hello. As you know, I generally say hi back. So right now, what we're looking at right now, again, let's just jump into a recap of the overall markets. You're looking at the S&P 500, the SPY daily chart dating back to 2017. We're up about 1.2% on the day. So the rally that we started on Friday continued into Monday. Uh, you can see here we closed at 292. 32 so essentially and, and i can zoom in here right and so i have this highlighted um or this notation here indicating that the range that we have traded in since this market pulled back essentially has been 281 to around 294 so that's like about a 13 point spread right that has been the spread since the market pulled back after Jay Powell, pardon, Fed Jay Powell issued uh, rate cuts. And so what I've been saying essentially for the past uh, few weeks in uh, these trading videos, I said that, well, for me, that resistance level uh, is around uh, 293 to 295. And I've indicated anything above that uh, on volume, a strong push above 293 to 295, we can then conclude that the market wants to rally right now in the shorter term 280 for the most part has served as support so if we break down 280 and again that also uh, aligns with the 200 day moving average if we manage to break down that 280 level then i think we can take a trip to 273 but right now uh sitting here 292 32 we're closer we're closer to resistance so let's talk about that here so today we went as high as uh 293.08 uh, uh, before again pulling back slightly to close at 292.32. Uh, so volume appeared a bit light for the day. Uh, and again, uh, judging by the open, right? We opened today at 292.19. We closed at 292.32. So judging by today's open and close, we can see that there has been something of a tug of war, a push and pull uh, with both the bulls and the bear, right? So we opened it, not to sound repetitive, but I want to drive this point home. So we opened at 292.19, right? The low of the day clocked in at 291.44, the high of the day clocked in at 293.08. So a couple of things with those numbers. One, we didn't have much range today, right? The low is 291, the high 293. That's about a two point spread. We opened at 292, we closed essentially at 292. So no matter what we did in the trading day today, right? We ended up essentially right at the starting point. Hence why I said um, on many levels, uh, we had a tug of war, a push and pull, uh, or a push, uh, a pull and tug, however you say it, right, with the bulls and the bears. So uh, my the levels that I'm paying attention to heading into this week for the remainder of the third quarter, potentially uh, into the fourth quarter, will be resistance of 293 to 295. As you can see, since the pullback, we have not gotten up uh, or above that level in any meaningful way. Granted, we did get to 294.15, but we pulled back again. The trick for me would be to get above 295 with a decent level of volume and to hold that. Like, that should serve as the new floor. And if that occurs, then I can say, well, you know what? It seems like the market wants to trend higher. And at that point, uh, more than likely, I will let go of my short. So, yes, I am still short the market. I have my game plan. I have my metrics right now. I'm just paying attention to what the SPY wants to do. And today, uh, we continue the rally that we started on Friday, closed at 292.32, so the SPY is up nicely. Again, paying attention to 293 to 295 until we can really crack those levels uh, with uh, substantial volume uh, um, and uh, have that serve as a new floor. Until we can do that, I'm still going to lean uh, bearish. What else? And then we have the IWM daily chart uh, up about uh, 1% on the day. The chart dates back to around 2017. Today we closed at 150.12. So similarly, like with the SPY, the rally started on Friday, continued into 
Monday were up about 1% on the day. Uh, you can see here, uh, the volume wasn't that heavy, but it looks like sellers dominated today, although we're up about 1%. So that's rather curious heading into tomorrow. Uh, would not be surprised if we have a pullback tomorrow. Again, the high of today clocked in at uh, 150.89. So I've stated many times before that I'm not gonna concern myself too much with the gyrations in the middle. I'm just gonna focus on those two price points uh, that I've been paying attention to for a long time. We're gonna call that support. That's this line right here, 144 to 145, and resistance uh, of around 160. A breach in either direction with confirming volume, in my opinion, will signal will the, where the market wants to go. So sitting here at 150 for me, there's not much to be done. Absolutely nothing, nothing to be done in my book. If it gets to 144, there's something to be done. If it gets to 160, there's something to be done. Anything in between, and that's a 20 point spread. Anything in between for me, it's just noise. Okay, should be noise to you too. What else? All right, so let's check up on gold. What's going on in the gold market? All right, so we closed uh, today at 141.11, pulled back a little bit off about 1.17% on the day. For those that are not familiar with what I'm seeing with gold, let me explain to you what I'm looking at. So again, this is a daily chart uh, focusing on price action beginning in 2013. So we're in 2019, so that's about six years worth of data highlighted on a daily time frame. So. Uh, so again, we have been cycling through two points, right? That's the bottom point. I'm not going to concern myself with that too much. And the top point, the top point, we can call that resistance that comes in around uh, 130. 130 for six years has served as sort of like a ceiling for gold, right? Resistance. So when it got there, you would see gold uh, actually pull back or decline. Look here, right? We got to that 130 level. You see the pullback. Uh, got slightly above, but then you saw that pullback. Ran up, got there once again. You see the pullback rinse repeat. So it has served as essentially as a ceiling. However, in uh, June of 2019, we actually powered through that 130 ceiling and continued to trend up, uh, getting as high as around uh, 143 close to 144 now that also serves as a ceiling you can see it here right we got to that level and we pulled back to subsequently close at 140 uh, uh, pardon close at 141 11 today now with gold if we can penetrate this new ceiling right 130 was once a ceiling now we're going to consider it the floor uh right now 144 is a ceiling if we can penetrate that then for me i think the next level is i'm not going to draw any lines i'm just going to move this one up right here uh would be around that 150 mark so if you're looking to get into gold and you're saying well what's a good t uh, point to go along for me, I'm not saying to go along in this area, but if it powers through 144, chances are it looks like it's going to take a trip to around uh, 150 before it hits uh, another ceiling. So that's what I'm seeing in gold. What else? All right, from gold to Bitcoin, what's going on with Bitcoin? We're up about 5% on the day, closer to 6%. And even with such a strong move, we're still, we still manage to find ourselves within that $10,000 uh, area. And as you, as you may know from my previous videos, 10,000 really is support that should represent the floor for Bitcoin. As long as we can stay above 10,000, then I think we have a real shot at around uh, 13 to 14,000. We're about mid-August, and so I'm actually quite surprised considering the me momentum we had uh, from May heading into uh, June, July. I'm actually very surprised that we've sort of stalled out here at around that 10,000 mark. Uh, but even so, so, you know, even so, it's still, in my opinion, healthy price action as long as we can stay above 10,000. So we can say from June of 2019 to August for the past two months, uh, Bitcoin is establishing a bit of a mini range here. The bottom end of that range, let's call that around uh, 9,500 to 10,000. The top of that range, let's call that around uh, 13,000. So we're cycling through there. So if you're looking to actually get into Bitcoin, those might be the levels you want to pay attention to. So what will get us above 30, uh, pardon, what will get us uh, to 13 to 14,000? As simple as uh, it might sound, we just need more people to actually go out there and bid uh, bid Bitcoin up, meaning we actually need people to go out there and purchase Bitcoin and actually hold them, right? That's what's going to get us to uh, 13 to 14,000. But aside, aside from that, if we can... Um, 
penetrate that 12,000 level uh, on volume, have that service in you, floor. that should tell you that we're on our way to 13, 14,000. Do I think that we can actually get to those levels in 2019? Absolutely. I have a year end target of around uh, no, no less than 40,000, which will be uh, uh, new all time highs. I can even see this going as high as 100,000 if we have obviously another Bitcoin extreme bull market run which typically can happen within a two to three week time range time frame. So I know that we only have about four months or so left in the year, but if you look at Bitcoin's previous run-ups, right? If we go back and we look at Bitcoin's previous run-ups, they do not take long to unfold. This one uh, in 2017 happened from September to around December, started at 3,000 uh, and then capped out at around uh, 20,000. So in three months, this can clearly go from where it's at right now at around 10,000 to, uh, you know, um, to its previous highs of around 20,000 and all time highs of around 40,000. It's a very fast moving commodity. So uh, for me, 40,000 still in the works for 2019, possibly even 100,000. All right. So that's my take. What else? All right, and then we have ticker YUMA daily chart. Huge, huge, huge congrats to the bulls. Uh, stock closed at three. It's saying here that uh, it's a gain of about 141% on the day, closer to 142%. However, however, if you factored in that this stock went as high as $6.45 on the day, uh, when you look at where it was at on Friday and Friday's close, it was actually up with today's high of 645. It was actually up 366 percent on the day so again huge congrats to anyone that was in this trade and was able to capitalize off of this huge move so what am i paying attention to now well obviously one thing that's standing out is the um obscene in my opinion amount of selling that's going on here the fact that the high of today clocked in at 645 yet we retraced to close at three which is closer to the low of the day signals to me perhaps there might be a little bit more unloading heading into tomorrow there's some activities going on right now and after i was trading uh the stock is down about six percent i see a quote of 281 so again uh right now and after hours we're very close to today's low of 272 coming from 645 that's a bit of a retracement right that's a huge pullback seems as though that there's again as i've stated before an obscene amount of selling. So for me, uh, pay attention if you're looking to jump in or you're th thinking of taking whatever profits you have right now. You wanna pay attention to what's going on tomorrow in pre-market. If we open up below today's close and especially below today's low of 272, then watch out, I could, I would expect more of a pullback and potentially at some point in the week, we might fill this gap here of around uh, a dollar and 36 cents. So be careful out there, but huge congrats to anyone who uh, was able to capitalize off of this move today. What else? All right, so let's uh, end it on a high note. Let's wrap it up and round it out with ticker D. PW daily chart another another uh stock today another huge winner another huge runner so congrats to the bulls congrats to anyone that was able to capitalize off of this move as well stock is up about 133% on the day there's some uh uh, activities in after hours trading as well. An additional 3%, I see a quote of $4.93. So again, huge, huge congrats to the bulls. Now, what am I seeing right now with DPW? Again, it's a daily chart dating back to our April of 2019. But I just really want to focus in on price action today because that's where all, where all the action occurred, right? So similarly to... Um, Similar, pardon, similarly to ticker YUMA, stock was up huge on the day, right? The high of today for ticker DPW was $10.68, and we managed to pull back to close at $4.80, which is closer to the low of uh, today's low, which is $4.60. And you can see here, there seems to be some unloading. So I'd be cautious. I probably wouldn't be taking a long position here. What I'd be paying attention to is what's going on tomorrow in pre-market. Again, if we open up below today's close of 480 and if we or if we open up below today's low of 460 watch out i think the selling might amplify so 
caution out there with ticker DPW. You look at the volume here, it seems as though sellers dominated, even though it's up about 133% on the day. Again, we went from a high of 1068 to close at 480, which is close to today's low. That says to me that there was a lot of uh, unloading going on. So again, be careful out there with ticker DPW. So that's it. Let's cap it there. Tina here once again from shortmeetina.com. If you enjoyed any portion of this video, I'd like for you to do three things for me. One, comment in the comment section. Were you able to capitalize on ticker YUMA? How about ticker DPW? Uh, what's going on? Are you in gold? What about Bitcoin? What about the SPY and the IWM? Are you still on the sidelines? If you are, you missed the last two days of rally. What's going on? How are you treating your portfolio? How is your portfolio treating you? How are you positioned? Again, comment in the comment section. That's the first thing. Secondly, I do videos Monday through Friday. If you want to ensure that you never miss one, make sure that you're subscribed at our YouTube channel at Short Me Tina right now. We're a little over 1,200. I'm trying to get to 1,500 by at least the ending of August. Help me get there. We're pushing to 1,500. If we can get to 1,500, 2,000 is right around the corner. So help me out by hitting that subscribe button, that like button, and making a comment in the comment section. And lastly, lastly, my friend, I've been trading for well over 15 years. That's one five, closer to 20. I've been doing this for a long time. So if you think you can learn anything from me and behind the scenes, I talk about a lot of the things that worked for me uh, when I started out, a lot of things that didn't work for me. I kind of like open up sort of like this Pandora's box on my trading experience for the last uh, 20 years. So if you want to find out about that, definitely make sure that you head on over to shortmetina.com and sign up. Become a member. Thank you for listening. And as always, thank you for